We'd like for you to stand this morning and turn your hymn books to page number 421, the first nowhere of page 421. 421, page 421, the first nowhere. Page 421. We'll sing a Christmas song this morning. The first Noel. But he called Brother Paul Sharon to be there. So God tells us to preach the gospel to every creature. Well, it's impossible for me as a, a one person to preach the gospel to everybody. And so God would never give me a command that I couldn't fulfill. And so how he has done it, he has allowed us to be involved in missions. He said this, he said, and Jesus said in Acts chapter 1, he said, I shall give you power. You should be witness to me. You should be witness in Jerusalem and Judea and to, the, and to Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. 
And so the church's job is to get the, the gospel of Jesus Christ out to a lost world. So how do we do that? We, we do it through what's called faith promise, mission giving. We support missionaries. And so Paul Sherry and his family are one of our missionaries that we send money to uh, to help them to reach people with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said that he said, where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. And so I believe in giving to the work of God because if I give to the work of God, my heart would be in the work of God. And so I thank God that God has allowed us as a church to be a part of giving to missions. Uh, helping missions. Get, we, have, we support missions in Kenya, and Thailand, Brazil. I thank God that he allowed us to be partakers in missions given. Uh, I, I thank God for, for the, giving us the opportunity to invest in what he invested in. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So God is investing in the world. And God has given us as a church the responsibility to reach the world. And so what have happened, the church have failed our nation, have failed our cities, and have failed the states. And so now the church to people is a number of places where I come on Sundays. Yeah. And that's it. That's all people look at church. They don't look at nothing more than that. They don't look at that church is not a it's not a Sunday. Church is every day. And my church is what we it's not what a place I go, it's a place I belong to. And so, and the church I've gotten away from this missions. You, you go to our church, you're like, tell me what this is. Tell, ask me, what is a mission? You're like, what, what do you mean? What, what is mission? Do y'all support mission? Well, we don't support no mission. Have you ever met a missionary? No, I've never met a missionary. What you, I mean, that's our job. Jesus was the first missionary. Amen. So, so if Jesus is a missionary, that means I should be a missionary. Everybody should be a missionary. Everybody should be getting the gospel out. Every church should be involved in getting the gospel out to the, to the world. So there's people in Brazil that we're reaching. I'm not there. We're not in Brazil. But Brother Coquins and his family's in Brazil, and we support them. We uh, we help support them on a monthly basis. So we are reaching people from Greenville, Mississippi, in Brazil. Amen. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's that's what I'm, we got. Then we got uh, Brother uh, Richie's going to Kenya. Well, I, my ancestors might be from Kenya. I don't know. I never been an ancestor tree. What, what part of Africa I'm from? He he go here in Kenya, reaching some black folks that look like me. I ain't in Kenya, but he's gonna be there. We got Brother Fives. He's going to Thailand. I'm not in Thailand, but he's gonna be there here in a little bit. And we reaching people in Thailand. Them them, them Buddhists and Hinduism, false cults all there. He gonna be reaching them. So we gonna have a part of reaching people from Brazil, Kenya. I mean, all over the world from Greenville because we give to missions. What? I, 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 I'm there, sir. Listen, I'm not. I'm, listen, I, I, I'm glad God gave me the ability to give to missions. Mm -hmm. I'm glad God has burdened me to give to missions. Amen. That's just the God way of reaching the world. This church would not be here today, brother. Will you listen to me? This church would not be here today if we have churches all over the country that send this church money every month, every month, every week. We won't even, we couldn't even exist. I couldn't be my full time pastor if each church, each church send me money. Because my church, they don't, people, I don't get paid anything from this church. It's church all over the country send me money so I can do this full time, so I can go out door knocking, so I can go to the jail ministry, so I can go to the prison ministry. And people are here this morning because it's church in Oklahoma, it's church in New Mexico, it's church in California, it's church in Texas, it's church in North Carolina, it's church in South Carolina, it's church in West Virginia, it's church all over the country that have given us money so the gospel of Jesus Christ can get reached here in Greenville. Amen. That's amazing to me. Yes. It's amazing. So, I mean, I, I know when you said, Pastor, how do you get excited about this? I get excited about missions. I get excited about people starting churches. That's, I, that's what I get excited about. I get more excited about that if I got a new car. If you told me you, you see somebody saved, I get more excited. If you see somebody saved, you tell me you wanted that you got a million dollars in the bank. Because that million dollars going to go away yeah. one day, but that person gets saved, going to go be with God forever. Amen. So that money is temporary, no matter what it is. Amen. But that person getting saved is a life changing, not just life changing, but is eternal change. So I'm more concerned about eternal things. And so thank you. Uh, so what is the announcement here? But man, we had a great time praying yesterday. We come up with our revival starting tomorrow night. We kicking out the first night of the revival. And people saying, Pastor, how long ago? go? Well, we got it. We we got it from December 12th to the 19th. So Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, 7 p.m. Saturday night, we ain't gonna have it. We're gonna have our Christmas party at 5 on Saturday. We will come back Sunday morning, Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday evening, then we're gonna start again Monday. So that next Monday is the 19th. So we're gonna have service every day uh, except Saturday. 
And we're going to have our regular Sunday service uh, next week, so that's at normal. But every night this week, we'll have a revival at 7 p.m., Monday through Friday. Invite your friends. Invite people to come out to the revival. I, I believe my heart, God, will move. I, I believe God, the Holy Ghost of God, will stand in this place. I ain't just saying this. We had that prayer meeting yesterday, man. We prayed over the prayer list. We had a long prayer list. We have about five pages of people we prayed for. Then other, we prayed for other people that went on the list. Yeah. And man, we I prayed, my family, I prayed for an hour, my wife prayed for an hour, then came back together as a family, prayed for another hour. So my family never prayed for three hours. Just saturated and out of the love that Sister Roger when they came and prayed, man. We had, I'm talking about what we did. Some people got it's something we got prayed for a million times yesterday. Yeah. It's something we got prayed for yesterday, yesterday more than ever got prayed their whole life. Yeah. But we I'm, I'm serious, man. We and, and well, listen, we I'm serious, man. We saturated yesterday in prayer for about six hours, different people praying for an hour piece, and we man. The, the devil been attacking ever since. Amen. He been attacking, trying to call. I call it spirit confusion. Amen. Not just, but people just things in general. Yes. And so, because he, the devil, mad that we prayed like that yesterday. We never in our history of our church ever ever prayed for six hours of church separate like that. We did. We never done that. And I was fast, and I'm saying it's over now. I, I don't know how many y'all fast, but I, I was fast. I just want to pray yesterday. I, was, I, I eat about ten something like about nine something like that. close to ten. I want God more than I want some food. I mean, but today I'm eating today. Amen. 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 I'm eating today now. I ate me a little bit out of about 10. I ate me a little Caesar, man. My stomach got to say, hey, now you fat. Now I'm trying to eat so I, and that's why I got another a five hour piece of little Caesar. Amen. 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 But my stomach ready to eat today. But man, I'm, I hope that y'all be able to come. Invite some friends. Yeah. Invite some families. We're going to have a different preacher every night. Monday night preacher, Tuesday night preacher, different. You're not going to be the same preacher every night. We got them coming from Tennessee, uh, Arkansas. We got them coming from uh, 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 further up northeast Mississippi. Uh, one of them is an evangelist. So we, we, so we got them coming from different places. We're going to have a different preacher every night. Every night. You're not going to be the same preacher. Every night going to be a different preacher preaching the word of God. So I'm excited about what the Lord is going to do tomorrow. Because we really prayed yesterday and really got to seek God's face. And church, I should pray. But what else we have? Uh, we have a Christmas party. I told you, I'm going to be the 17th. So uh, on the 17th, we're going to have a Christmas party. I ask everyone to bring a gift from worth $5 or $10. Or you can bring something from home that's in good condition. Then this past week, we had two people to get saved. Two young ladies. One was a teacher and one was a social worker. One of them teaching Holiday, she lived in Greenville, and one's a social worker working for the D DHS. Both of them get it like the crack. They live at the Bow Mountain apartments over there. Um, and the, the social worker, she traveled all the time. She, she had the, on the coast today, somewhere around Pastor Gluga, Gulfport, Biloxi, somewhere around every day. So she told me she wasn't going to be able to make it to church today. So pray for the people that's just getting saved. Amen. Pray for your, uh, your church family. Hope you pray for your church family. The Bible tells us pray one for another. Jesus said, he said, when you come back, we find faith on what? On earth. And so I'm praying that Jesus will find us faithful, some faith on earth. Amen? Amen. So let's pray for your church family. Pray for those that are not remember. You see people come, pray for them. Pray for them. They might not be remembered, but pray for them uh, that God will be with them and their family. What else do we have for now? Don't forget, uh, Tuesday, we're going to do things a little different this week. And I know we all, of course, everybody not really participated. So we have a revival this week. We can't be not going to be able to go so in at five uh, because uh, we can go. But I'm not going to put that much pressure on myself to try. The preacher will come in about 6, then I'm going to have to try to hurt from soul winning. So we're going to do go soul winning a little earlier. If you want to go soul winning with us Tuesday, uh, let me know. We'll, we'll go out a little earlier. Uh, I'm thinking about more around 1 o'clock on Tuesday. We'll go knock some doors, invite some people to revival. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go with soul winning every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, knock on doors, trying to get people saved and invite people to the revival. I'm going every day, and I'm going to go at 1 o'clock every day this week here uh, at 1 o'clock trying to get some people to get saved, but also uh, get some people to come to the revival. And so you want to meet me at a church on any of them days at 1 o'clock? Come on, 1 o'clock. Uh, we actually come here, we're going to get, get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Amen. Uh, what else do we have? Um, we need to y'all pray for us. You know, I don't know. I know I'm going to say that um, about a lot of things here, but we need some prayer. We need a, uh, we need a band. Yeah, we've been, we need a band for a while. We got one church so far that has sent us some money, sent us $900. We got another church that's going to send us about 1000 but we haven't received it yet. We got another church that's going to send us something, but only one church that has sent it for us. That's what. But we got other churches that have promised us. And they're going to help us with it. And our band is over. He did a name one. So basically, I so called that, that band was built in 1990. 
So this band is 27 years old. It's about to be 2017 next month. So this band we have is 27 years old. And it's not reliable. It just it, 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 it's going out. It's, I mean, and it, it, every time it's not safe. It's, you never know what's going to happen with it. We, we, we carry people in that band and something happened. Oh my Lord, God going to woke up. Listen, that man, listen to me. We'll get sued from, from here to, to, to Canada, man. Yeah, you got insurance on the band, but I ain't trying to get sued. I don't, I don't like going to court and I don't like the judge and I don't like all that stuff. Hey, I don't like dealing with them people. I like to pray for them, but other than that, I don't like to go stand before them. I get nervous when I stand before a judge, amen. I'm going to me on, I, mean, I get so nervous. I, I be speeding sometimes. And it, it, it wrong. When I speed sometimes, I get caught in my scene. Or oh, that light is yellow. And I say, well, boy, I'm, 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 I'm close. And, I, and the police say, hey, sir, you're supposed to stop. You're supposed to slow down. For me, sometimes, I don't give up to y'all. Don't, I pray for you, pastor. I ain't perfect. I see that you got to be light getting yellow. I said, well, I ain't for the way. I'm going to punch that man. <laughs> and I punch you one time. I was in Illinois. Word. Oh, he said, and I was in the word. He said, sir, why well, I stopped? I said, well, I ran the red the, 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 the light. He said, at least you know you know what you did. He said, well, he said, I'm in a good mood. I'm going to do like I did another guy. I'm just going to warn you. I said, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I got pulled over the last couple months, many times, man, because I'm my, my, my sin problem, amen? amen. Uh, but I don't like that. So I'm saying, I want to go before the judge and the lawsuit. So what I'm saying, we need is, listen to me. If God would ever speak to your heart, to help us and give something towards this van. We got a van uh, fund. Well, I mean, it's in our bank account, but we ain't going to touch it. So I believe in balance the book. So I know how much money we got coming in for tithing and offering. But also, I know how much money we have for the van to have given. So $900 is, came in thus far for a van. So therefore, if we got $2,000 in the bank, we're up $3,000, wherever we got, I don't know how much really is in the bank. I don't know. But that money, I know. So therefore, 900 of it ain't, ain't the church. Yeah. What I mean by that, we can't spend it because it don't belong to it belongs to the van offering. Amen. So that's like, so they don't belong to us. So to me, that $900 is not there because we can't spend on anything but a van. So, and so therefore, God would ever touch your heart to give towards a van ministry. It's a ministry, people, people, church. We show we really appreciate that anybody, we need some, we need, we need a church of the living God. We need to gather together. He said, God, we ain't got much. Everybody give with the living they do have, we give something. We all can come up with something. Yes. I learned this in life. You know, it, listen, Jesus took five loaves of bread and two small fish and he multiplied. And you learn about Jesus. He never had a lot of people to do his work. That's right. You didn't notice that. It always been a handful of people here, a handful of people there. God don't need a lot of people. Matter of fact, when everybody goes to battle, God said, okay, I don't want you to do They had about 30,000. Jesus said, God said, too many. Then they had some more thousand. God said, too many. He said, well, I want you to go to the men. They go down to this water here, and I remember the one that do look like a dog, the one and the one with their tongue in their hand. He said, So I want you to make it small, so they went down to 300. Mm -hmm. huh? It went from 30,000 to 300. That shows God can take a lot of people. We think, Well, we had a church full of people, but we can do more for God. No, you don't know. God never happened. Never happened. Never happened. Most churches ain't feel, y'all. How many churches go to where every city is? Uh -huh. I ain't went to, I ain't saying don't exist. I ain't went to a church yet that every service, every chair of field, if all, all the people feel every service. I've been to church 7,000 people. I, I've been to church church 7,000 people. And every church, every chair won't feel them. But what I'm saying, so God don't take up, you don't need a house full of people to do what God wants you to do. Yeah. Right. Matter of fact, when I was on deputation, I was brother up. The people that gave me the biggest love offer. This is true. The biggest love offering came from people that had small churches. I went to a church man had about six hundred in attendance. They gave him a three. We were there for four days. Gave him a three hundred dollar love offering. I'm gonna have six hundred people at the church. Six hundred. They gave. I was there for four days. Three or four days. They only gave me three hundred. But I preached at one church had about 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 eight in it. They gave him a thousand. I preached one message. Hold on, one church had 600. I was there for four days. They gave me three, they gave me three hundred dollars. I preached at one church. The other church is a church that got six hundred people. They gave me three hundred. I preached at a church in Texas had eighty people. Gave me a thousand. I want to preach one message, and they flew me in. So hold on, now. you think the church of six hundred should have gave me a thousand like that? But no, a small church with eighty people yeah. preached one message, flew me in, and gave me a thousand. I love off for one message. It cost that that cost that church about fourteen hundred dollars to for me to preach one message. See, I'm going to try and tell you, I've been around, I've been proud of this country, I've been to big churches, I've been to small churches, I've been to a church that had three people in it, five people, six in it, I've been to people that had six, seven, uh, six hundred in it. But the, church, the smaller churches I'm on, they give the most. Amen. That is a proven thing. Amen. So God don't take a, don't take a lot of people to do the work I got. So what I'm saying, y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm pleading with our church, we need a new man. 
And in church, yeah, they helping us, but it's our job to help ourselves too. Amen. Why they helping us help ourselves, but why they helping us? That's Let right. us help ourselves. Because that man benefit a lot of people. Yes. And that man benefit a lot of people. And so don't you understand? So you got to understand that man benefit a lot of people. It does, really. Our church is known by the that man right there, we've been having three of you. So I know you, I see you right around, I see you all right. One day told me, she said, I see you all in the neighborhood. So she said, yeah, you met me. She said, I see you all in the neighborhood. And that, she said, I see you everywhere. See what I'm saying? So people, people are watching us, and they see a church man, and they see we go so in there, man. They see we out doing now. Who's out there, like, over there, and white, all in the big old neighborhood. That guy said, hey, keep the good work. He, we know him by our vehicles. So pray, y'all, and ask God to provide, but ask God how much he wants you to give. Amen. Amen. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I ain't scared to talk about that today. We need it. People, yes, we're going to have about five million. We might have about three thousand dollars going to come in from other churches. I believe that. They're going to have probably about three thousand. You can't get a decent man. We need something a little more than that to get something a little nice and newer. So help us pray for us. Amen. Amen. What else we have for announcement? Uh, 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 we have a couple of visitors today. I think from one visitor. Rosalie, that's the visitor right there. I know. You, she looked like your niece a little bit. But then I look again, I said, no, that's not your niece. Amen. But she reminded me of your niece a little bit. Man. But I know, so we have two visitors today. I know that for sure. I like to start with her. I, I, I met her the other day. At, uh, I'm, I'm, she don't give her a testimony, but I seen her at, uh, at Alpha Depot the other day. I went there and bought a pen because I lost my pen. See, I'm a pen freak, you can call it. I like the nice pen. My pen is called Good Money. They don't cost a lot of money. They cost good money, but they last a long time. And I lost my pen, I thought. So I went to Alpha Depot to buy another pen. And come to find out, I found my pen. So I believe, I believe that God... Heavy thing is I lost my pen because he thought I was going to find it. He knew it. We had me go off the depot early in the morning. I never go off the depot. It was about 8 something in the morning when I think it was. And she was, and she was there. And I'll let her tell you, then I'll finish up. Tell your name, where you're from, how you get by the church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Delinda Robinson. And actually, I'm here, as Pastor said, uh, around with each other at the uh, office depot. But prior to that, I had gotten um, some from the outreach work. I did this Roman and John Amen. magazine. I live over on uh, East John Street. Yes. And so actually, I had two, and I put them in my bedroom on my uh, stool in the bed, and I see every now and then, and then I came one that I think it's Monday or yes. Tuesday, yes, yes, and I saw. I said, you know what? I'm gonna go. And I remember, and then I said, you are Pastor Charles. And I can't remember the yes. last name, yes, but is. I do remember him. And I got up this morning. I know this week late, but I got up this morning so that I could be here. Amen. Let's go ahead. What I'm saying is this, brother. Let me give a, what I'm saying at this church is this. She got two drum drums from her door. So, that, so her reason to come here is not because I bump into her. The reason why she moved by our church is because somebody, I don't know if me or one of our church members, we don't know. It doesn't matter who did it. But somebody on East John Street knocking on doors, and she got two of our John and Romans. And so when she bought it to me at the store, she knew where I was because somebody left some information from our, our door throughout when we went soul winning. And so it's we should hear because somebody knocked on our door. Amen. 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 So that's where your door knocking work. It really works. So then we got a uh, friend of Rosalina. I would like for you to stand. Uh, tell her your name, where you're from. Would you like to stand? She's like she's young back there. College age, young lady. Tell us your name. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I am Sarah Williams. I am from a great mountain. I mean, a great city mountain. Okay. And also, you should remember me. You used to come to my family house all the time. Oh, oh, that was Cedar. Yes, sir. I knew you said that name. You said that we, that Shatara women. I said, I know your family. Yes, how do you remember them? That's good. Yes, I knew I remember. Let's give our hands to you. Amen. I used to come to house all the time. Matter of fact, her family came to our we, we got started April 20, 2016, 13, brother. Her, her aunts and her grandmother came. A lot of her family. I mean, that, they, man, they brought a whole household of people. Uh, so our first service, they came on that Sunday evening. I used to go by the house all the time. Yeah, I remember her, her sister, mama, grandmother, all of them. So we're glad that you decided uh, to come today. So we'd like for y'all to fill out that visitor card to the best of your ability. Then during the offering plate, you can place it in the uh, offering plate. Then the pen is yours to keep as a token of appreciation that you're here. Uh, what else do we have for announcement? I I think that it, do anybody, I, I, who, who think you're going to invite some people to revive this week? 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I want y'all to prepare, man. Participate. Come. I know you, some, some of y'all probably can't come every night, but you may be able to come every night. That's never listen. But if you can't come, then support uh, the revival that we need. The MI did three people here. Two people, he said, we're two or three together in his name. They're here to miss us. But I know God got a word for us, and we, we all need to hear. If you ever come seven o'clock every night, it would truly uh, be a blessing. What else I come? I feel like I'm missing something. I feel like I'm missing something. Well, I think that's all. So, brother, you want to come up here? Because I knew you didn't know that first no way. Out. And uh, so, uh, anyway, we got another song here. Uh, we're going to sing here. Yeah, I All right, well, everyone, please stand and turn your hand up to page 356. I must tell Jesus, page 356, in your red hymn book. So this morning, we'll be the next time we're here until next Sunday. 
And so, but uh, so did so tonight. Come tonight. I forgot. I knew I was missing something. Come tonight. Come support them. They come here. Uh, they church have helped us out and have supported us. And I, I preach uh, for that church twice. I preached for it last year. But I mean, twice. Uh, I mean, this year and last year, I preached for this church, Bible Baptist Church in in uh, Jacksonville, Arkansas. So they will have some uh, some people here tonight. And so, if you're able to come back tonight, out this Sunday evening service. That six is going to be good tonight. I really believe it's going to be very good. So we're about to receive our offer tonight. We've been giving to our Jesus offering on top of our tithes and offerings. We've been giving to Jesus offering. I think right now we got about a hundred some about a hundred dollars or something that so have came in. That's that's not the tithe and offer. That's something extra uh, as far as uh, Jesus offering. We do that every year. We've been doing it for three years now. We give something to Jesus on his birthday. Last year we raised about three hundred dollars. And this year we had like a hundred something dollars, so we give up to Jesus offering. Uh, I'm gonna say this though. Uh, I, I was talking to Brother Love a little bit yesterday, and just uh, I was telling him this. I went to a church every time you look around that church. The pastor get up and say, "Hey y'all, we need a, we need a, hey y'all, we need a, we need to be a missionary. They need, they need, they need some money." So he talking about missionary, need some money. Hey church, we need to, we need to build on to our church. We out and grow, we need to build. The pastor get up talking about money. He said the pastor get up and say, hey church, we need to continue to support mission. We got a missionary going to Haiti. We got a missionary going here. They're using different names. And, and not saying he said we're Haiti. We need to support these mission. He get up and talk about money. Then he said, hey church, we need some buses. One of my pastor friends in Tennessee, they just bought eight new buses to go pick up kids for church. So he got before the church. Hey church, we need some money to buy eight buses. So what I'm saying, any Bible-believing church, any church that's trying to do something with God, the pastor will get up and talk about money. Because especially if you're trying to do something big for God. He's going to get up and he's going to have to talk about it. more we grow, we're going to talk more about it. We're going to be building on. When I say, hey, church, we need to be trying to build a gym here. Hey, church, we're trying to build a Christian school here. Hey, church, we're about to build a, a homeless shelter for people are getting out of jail and people that's homeless. And we have a, a recovery of United uh, 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 alcohol and uh, drugs. And, but it's biblical. And they need somewhere to stay. He's going to call money and build that. So here we're going to be talking about money a lot. We're going to be building, building, building. We're going to be buying buses one day. We're going to go down there to the head spot and say, y'all got some buses for us to buy. And we want to buy from y'all. And we got to use these buses to pick up kids for church. Amen. And so y'all hear a lot more about it. We, we, we want to do something big. So we're going to call money to pick up kids up for church. Amen. Get them buses. We're going to go all the way to Charlotte, Hollandale, Cleveland, uh, Rolling Fork, Angola, Pentaburn, uh, uh, Greenwood. We're going to be going all over the Delta to pick up kids on these, these, these yellow buses. We're going to paint them blue and white. <laughs> what I'm saying is we're going to paint them blue and white. <laughs> and... Uh, we ain't gonna go on the color. They want, the pastor, the pastor pick the colors around here. We gonna, we gonna paint them blue and white. Amen. I already got the, the top part will be white. I already got it mapped out. The bus gonna be blue and the left will be white. Y'all, my mind, I'm, I'm ruined, y'all. It's already it, 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 it's in my mind. But I'm not saying, though, I'm not gonna talk about money. I'm saying that don't, uh, it doesn't sound like you're gonna talk about it. You're gonna hear about it in church. Because you just call them money to do things. Amen. Amen. We're going to buy some buses. We're going to do it. I'm telling you, we're going to church. They have a lot of buses. Yeah. We're, we're, brother, we was out of the yesterday. And the guy was going at, uh, he was doing a, uh, what that was, the, the concrete. I, I, I didn't know that they, all that work going to uh, 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 land out concrete. I see why they charge so much. Hey, man, one day we'll have to build more concrete. Uh, we'll have to build more parking space one day. Got the church will get growing, so we're going to need somewhere to park. It'll cost thousands of dollars just to do concrete. Huh? Yeah. One of these days the roof gonna come off the thing. Then we had to come, hey, hey, we're gonna go have to go to Brother Williams say, hey, brother, what's what you gonna charge for? <laughs> <laughs> That's being real. Yeah. So what I'm saying, don't get nervous when you hear me talk about money. It's nothing to get nervous about. Amen. It's Amen. for the work of God. It's nothing to be nervous Amen. about. It's nothing to get offended about. It's nothing to get mad at me about. That's it's right. just we're trying to do something for Jesus. Yeah. Now if I get up here now for glory, if I get up and say, hey church, I'm gonna, we're gonna raise ten thousand dollars for me today. <laughs> Now, we're going to raise money for me today, y'all. How many times, brother, love, since you've been here, did I ever get up and ask for money for myself? Never. <laughs> and I've been passing over 40 years in, 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 in April. Every time I ask for money, all the way for the church or for somebody else. I never have for the ones. I never say, hey, church, I want this for my anniversary. I haven't done that, brother. He, he was here for him, him and Sister Lowe, here the first anniversary. My mom and my brother, they here the first anniversary. My, my mom didn't come here long into my my mom would say, I never got up and say, hey, church, boom. there's money for me today. Everything come in for Pastor Hammond. Uh -huh. Never done it. Never done it. Never done it. Never said, church, I want this for my anniversary. Never asked for it. So what I'm saying is not for me. It's for the work of God. Amen. So every time I talk about it, you've been here, Brother William, y'all been here. When I talk about it, it's for the work of God. Amen. Never been for me. I don't care about me. Yes, 
should I get paid one day? He said, well, it's not about me. It's about the work of God. And I know I'm not going to get paid from the church that hurt the church. So I work for free for the church and not to make sure it won't be a burden until we can get to that point. Amen. Amen. Just part of it. I love y'all. I mean it. Come back tonight again. I love y'all church. Uh, give to the Jesus offering. Enjoy your Christian. We'll have church on Sunday morning, on Christmas, Sunday night on Christmas. And I pray y'all. I love y'all dear. Thank y'all visitors for being here. I mean, I mean it this morning. I love visitors. We really appreciate y'all taking y'all time. Y'all can have it to Inner Church of Greenville. We're glad y'all came. Thanks, Brother Weaver, Sister Weaver, for coming here. Y'all can go to Inner Church of Greenville. It's 200 Church of Greenville. And you can go even try to Greenville. Y'all got people. Y'all can travel all over to find try to find a church. But y'all can't release my cousin. She, she, she lives in Hollandale. She can get it's, 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 it's a lot of churches in Hollandale. She passed by to get here. Amen. So, because I'm Amen. glad you decided to drive here. And she passed me in churches coming to this church. So we thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Brother Love, we want to pray. Ask God bless all. Father God, we thank you for this honor for this evening, Father. Thank you for the blessing of you. Bless those who have a heart to give, Father, but don't have to Yes, Lord. Yeah. Bless them to be able to give all next time. Those who have to give, bless them to be able to give more. Bless them. Thank you for them. Thank you for this evening. Bless the Son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 chapter 3 last week, and today we're going to start off in Ephesians chapter 4, and we're moving along to the book of Ephesians, and we're in chapter number 4 today, and uh, so we thank the Lord for his provision and, and giving us a uh, message for the church, and uh, we thank God for last week's message that encouraged to me, uh, even myself, uh, and I'm going to tell y'all something, I, I know a lot of people think as a pastor that when you hear a pastor preach, you think that he know everything he's preaching about. But I'm going to tell y'all a little secret. I'm going to let y'all in on the pastor world a little bit today. A lot of stuff when I preach, I, throughout that week, I have just learned for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been studying. I'm like, wow, I never knew that word me that. Wow. I never knew that. So you know, I, I passed it up. I used to say the same thing to a brother. I said, man, I just give it a pastor ever preach. I thought a pastor had a whole Bible in Ryan. <laughs> I said, how did they go every Sunday morning, Sunday night, and he preaching all these different men? I said, that man ain't know the whole Bible. I didn't know that God was teaching him Amen. as he went. You know, Amen. I thought he just knew all of them off top. Then he would, just, uh, God would give him a message that he already knew about, but I kind of realized pastors like me, we don't know much. We don't know a lot about the Bible. We learn as we go. Amen. We're growing. You know what I'm saying? Amen. I'm growing. Amen. I am actually best. Since I've been a pastor, I have, I have grew so much spiritually. Yes. I'm being, I have, I mean, because I got to prepare for it, so I'm doing a lot more studying, I'm doing a lot more reading, I'm break, I'm, I'm learning more about these words that I never knew. I mean, this is a word of life, man. I mean, I didn't know what they mean. I, so when I study, I'm like, wow, what happened to this? Oh, it means he's a, uh, he's a defender of faith. Uh, oh, Alexander, I mean, he's, I mean, how many is he's a singing man. Alexander, he's a, a, a defender of me. I never knew that. I just found that out three months ago. That how many is me, a, 
a senior man. I never knew that Alexander being a defender of man. I never knew that. I've been saying for 14 years, and I never knew that. I just found out three months ago. I think that's something. Just three Amen. months ago, I found out what his name was. Amen. Amen. And so what I'm saying, I'm not going to let y'all put me on a two high pedestal. I'm growing myself. Yes. Amen. I'm growing as I go. Amen. Amen. I ain't got it all figured out. Some things that, boy, I don't know. I don't know. I, sometimes some people ask me some questions. Like, what do you think about that? I said, that's a good question. I don't know what I'm thinking about. <laughs> I don't know. She said, Pastor, man, I thought you were doing it all. No. No, I, I don't know what all God does, though. Amen. And I'm, I'm growing as I go. I'm growing as I'm, I'm making mistakes as a pastor. I don't know why I'm being a transparent. I make a lot of mistakes. I make, some, I make some bad decisions. I say something I ought not to say. I uh, look a certain way I ought not to look. And I'm just growing. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm growing as a pastor. And I'm, I'm, I'm more mature today than I was uh, last year. Amen. I'm more mature this year than I was three, two years ago. Yes. I'm more mature, so I'm growing. Next year's time, I'll be a different pastor. God Amen. Amen. But I'm growing. I ain't got to all figure it out. Yes. Amen. So I'm going to say something you don't like. And I might not say it how you like it, but I'm growing. Don't, Amen. don't, don't, don't leave me now. Just, I'll be patient with me. Amen. Just, Amen. Just, he, he's growing now. He's, Amen. He, yes, he's a pastor, but man, that guy's still crazy a little bit. <laughs> man, God, pray to my pastor. I can see he still got some of them old ways in the prayer for him. Yes. Amen. Oh, Amen. Amen. He said, Pastor, right, transparent. I want, I want to follow a man that wasn't transparent. That's right. I want to follow a pastor. If he told me he got it all together, I right. can't follow that man. Amen. He can help me. That's Amen. right. Because he'll look down on me. Yeah. Amen. That's right. He got it all together. My wife ain't got it all together. My daughter. Right. Amen. Man, we went out to eat the other day. I went to a missionary Wednesday. And that missionary told me, he said, well, I thought my kid was on with My daughter get mad. She uh, she changed her mind about the order. She like to cry. Well, my family ain't perfect one time. Amen. Amen. We ain't perfect. Amen. That's right. And, if you look, and my wife ain't perfect. Because she married to me. Because if you married to me, I'm going to make you mad some type of way. Amen. <laughs> if you was perfect, I'm going to get on your nerves. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. She was perfect before she met me. Well, I, I brought a sin. Now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> in Ephesians chapter number one, amen. amen. In, I mean, chapter number four and verse one, when you get that, say amen. Amen. The Bible said, therefore, the prisoner, I he said, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk what? Worthy. Of the vocation wherewith you are what? Child. With all lotus and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in what? Love. Enduring to keep the unity of what? Fear. In the bond of peace. And the Bible says, verse 4, there is one body. One spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your what? Calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and the Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. And so today, you know, even though we're going verse by verse, they call that expository uh, preaching and teaching. I mean, we're going verse by verse. But the, the, the question I have for you as a, a, a theme, a title is this. Are you walking right? So the Bible says in verse number one, I therefore the prison of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation where you are what? Huh. Oh. So our, basically you say, are you walking right? Are you lining up with your calling? Are you walking right? Or you can, I can tie this. Are you walking according to your calling? Are you walking worthy according to the call that God has on your life? Are you walking right today? Father, I pray you'll bless this message today. God, you don't give me sermons. I don't preach sermons. I preach message. I can go on, online and get a sermon, but I got to go to God and get a message. Right. So, Father, I pray, God, that you're blessed this message you have given me that I prepared this past week here. Because this is another we got prepared on Tuesday. Lord, it almost a week ago. And I prepared this message on Wednesday. I'm sorry, on Wednesday. And almost a week ago, I prepared this message. And Father, I pray your blessing. Give me power. Give me hope and those functions. Help me to help your people. Lord, there's people in this room today that got some problems I don't have a clue about. They got some things in their hearts that I don't have a clue about. They got some things that they answer God to, asking God to help and answer, Lord, that I don't have a clue about, but you do. And I pray, God, that you'll use me to help them this morning. I pray you'll use me to challenge your people to walk worthy, to walk right, to line up with their calling. I pray, Father, that anybody in this service today don't know for sure they saved. They hope they say they're doing the best they can to get saved, but they don't know if they die, they are, they are going to be with Jesus. I pray, God, that you are soften their hearts, that they'll get saved today. And Father, I'd like to tell you, I love you, God the Father. I love you, God the Son. I love you, God the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' precious name, and the church said, Amen. 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 I have a seat. Amen. Amen. Last week, I, I'm going to be short on my review. On last week, we said how that God is able to do anything God want to do. One person asked me before, he said, do you think that God can build a rock bigger than that he can't push himself? 
I said, so they don't, they, so people say, can God make a rock big enough that he can push himself? God can do anything he wants to do. God is not limited. He's an infinite God. I mean, his, his knowledge is not limited. His power is not limited. He omnipotent. That I means he got all power. He omnipotent. That I means he got all knowledge. He listen to me. Listen to me. He only present. I mean, he's everywhere at all times. And our God is not limited by time, by space, by the chief God. God still God with his reign. See, God don't get with it. Amen. Amen. He's sitting down the reign from heaven. Amen. Yes. And if, if God don't get all frustrated like I do, God don't get the disappointed like I do. God don't get all tensed up and disturbed like I do and you do, but because he's God. See, he ain't worried about nothing. So I get disturbed and tensed up. All the kind of things ain't looking right. Things ain't going like you planned it. Life ain't going like you wanted it. So we get all frustrated. We all we get hopeless sometimes. We get discouraged sometimes. God, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what the future holds, but God does. And God is able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think according to the power that working with us. Amen. Yeah. This past week I was in my office. Uh, and uh, a man called from from uh, called from Rutherford, Texas, which is not that far from Fort Worth and not that far. I preached at this church about four years ago, almost four years. It'd be four years in a couple more months. It'd be four years ago, and I met this guy four years ago. I don't remember this guy from a can of paint you can say. I'm in my office the other day. He said, brother, my name is Jason Brown. I'm just called, man. See how the church is going. I'm sure how God is able to do the seed and above, above all that we actually think. According to the power of the work of us, and to him be glory in the church. And so this man, Jason, I ain't talked to this guy in 40 years, and don't remember talking to him out in his church. Because I've been in so many churches, I don't remember everybody being out with you. Amen. And but so he said, I'm just calling and seeing how the church is going. I said, Brother, we've got a new building, God, church grow, growing, but growing slow. I just told him, I said, we're growing, but we're growing slow. I said, like a baby, man, we're we, we growing, live by little, live by little, one day we're getting big. But I said, boy, it's tough. I, I, I said, it's tough here in Greenville. I said, we're in a different type of uh, a, a part of the country. I, we got a different type of church. Most people, I told them, ain't never been to a church like this in a day in their life. Most people have never been to a church like this in a day in their life. And so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's very uncomfortable for people. One guy explained to me the other day, he said, man, every time I come to a church, I'm convicted. <laughs> Holy Ghost conviction. So, but my boy said, hey, brother, how much the church address? I said, I said, okay, you want my address? I gave the church address. Matter of fact, two or three days later, check in the mail. And the check, now listen to me. I didn't ask the guy for no money. I, I, don't, I went to God. I said, God, you know that money need to be paid. I said, God, that money need to be paid. God, I said, you know it need to be paid. God, I didn't go to Jason asked me anything. I ain't, I, I ain't remember Jason, but God put on me in heart that I met almost four years. God will put me on his heart to call me, to call the church. He went online and Googled my name. He had to Google the name and stuff to find me. That's why we get the church after to Google me. So he put in some work trying to find me and he tried to obey God and that man would have checked to the church and that's enough money to pay the mortgage. What I'm saying is this, that God is able to do. So you just go to God in prayer and listen to me. It's nothing too hard for God. All things are possible with God. If no God is not limited and we got to come to a conclusion that God got all the power. He can do however he wants to, how he wants to do it, when he wants to do it, who he wants to do it with. I'm going to tell you that, that God, when he do it, he will do it at least as he will do it the way you thought he would do it. Amen. Amen. That's right. I'll pray for some life series. See, some y'all say, well, Pastor, pray about everything I do. Because the Bible tells me, be careful for nothing. That's right. And I pray in a Amen. So I pray about everything. I was born with, uh, just a couple weeks ago, man, Wednesday was dark in this church. Yeah. I've been praying for months. I said, God, you know I don't like darkness. Because you said you like it. I said, God, I said, you said you like Jesus' light. And God, every time I come to church, I see darkness. Yeah. I said, real dark. I said, Lord, could you bless me with some chandeliers so we can put those chandeliers in the center? We can talk to two electricians. I said, man, we need some chandeliers, man. We can make more light. I said, Lord, please light up this place. I thought God's while well, probably going to send a thousand dollars and the electrician will charge, they charge your arm and leg, huh? Yeah. And so they ain't going to get the chandeliers. They ain't going to have to pay up labor. So I thought we would have more chandeliers in here. And God said, no, son. I, that light right there went out about two weeks ago. And God said, hey, son, I'm going to tell you something. He said, take that light out. And this is the only light that went out. He said, take that light out. And I want you to look at that light and go online and order that light. He said, because that light in there is shining bright. But it went out, so I went online, sure enough, I found the lights, and sure enough, there's more light in here. So he, he asked my prayer, right. and not more light in here, but we had to get no chandeliers, we had to get no electrician, and just yeah. God gave me some sense to go down in the water that bigger light, and I got more light. God did it, yeah. but he knew what I thought he would. Yeah, amen. amen. That's right. 
And he knew that. I mean, I know how about some the so basic statin spending uh, 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 a thousand plus or more. We spent 180, 190. Amen. That's right. Amen. So what I'm saying today is this, that God is able to do a sin of all of all them ask. I pray that God said, Lord, we need the money for the mortgage. But God said, okay, I'm going to touch a man hard enough from Texas that go to the Victor Baptist Church. I don't remember this man. So God is a man that I don't remember. Amen. And why? Because God is everywhere, so he can touch a person hard in Texas Amen. to help the church come in. Greenville, Mississippi. Amen. Only God can do that. That's right. So what I'm saying, sir, I don't know what you're going through. Amen. I don't know what you're asking God for. I don't know what you're waiting on, but I'm going to tell you, when he do it, he will do it the way that you never thought he would do it. Amen. He'll do it the way that you never thought you. He will not fail. He will do it the way that you know that he did it. Amen. Amen. I'm glad that they were in society. God Amen. able to do it. I told grow up, I ain't worried about it. You get a new man. I have no doubt. I ain't, I ain't stressing about it. I know that God is about to bless you with a nicer man. That's why it's cutting off. And that's why it's running really hot. That's why all type of things are going in it. We, we can't put enough money in it. Yeah. It's just that every time we put money, something else happens. But God is on the edge and on the, on the way to bless you with a nicer man. I'm here to tell you why. Because God is named as Jehovah Jireh. Okay. Okay. That means God. So God put a lot of influence. So some people say, I want you God at home. Well, that sounds good, but he said in the church. 
So God not going to do no miracles or how if you don't do it in church. Yes. And like I say, I'm, I say every week, the church is not the building. That's it. We know that. And the church will catch fire today. day. We're going to be there. We're going to be somewhere. We have to be in my living room. Mm -hmm. But we'll be somewhere. We'll be, we'll be in that whole conference room. That's it. And then once it get warm, if burn go to summertime, we can meet outside. Yeah. We're going to be sure the church is not the building. The church is the people of God. Amen. 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 Call them out assembly. Amen. And so, God, I'm going to go get some glory in the church. Hey, that's why I love the church. Because I have seen God. I have seen God do some miracles in the church. Amen. Amen. I have seen them on that in the church. Amen. I have seen God perform miracles in the church. I've never seen nowhere else. Yes. Amen. 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 But now Paul went from that. Then he changed the situation. He changed the what? Subject. He go from how God is able. Now he put some personal responsibility on you and I. Think about this. It's not where Paul says something. He said, now he's able to do a seat in the bottom of all the acts of faith according to the power of working of us. And to him be glory in the church through our world. Ages. Amen. Amen. Then he go from that brother and saying. He goes from saying that I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. He went from saying how, how big God is and begin to qualify himself, saying, I'm a prisoner of what? Lord. He said, I'm giving my position. I'm a prisoner. We talked about that three weeks ago. Then he said, I what? Beseech you. What? They were beseech me. I beg you. So he went from saying how God is able, how God want to bring glory to say I'm a prisoner of the Lord and I beseech you that you won't burn in the vocation wherever you are called. He was talking about how, the, uh, how big God is and how powerful God is to say what you should be doing. Amen. Uh oh. Paul, we like to hear how big God is. Oh, yeah. We like to hear God's position that he sits high and looks low. <laughs> hey, we like to hear about the power of God, how he can do anything. But then Paul changed the position of God. He changed from the power of God that he changed the new position. Yes. Yeah. He said, now you got a position that I beseech you, I beg you, that you walk worthy. Huh? I, he said you won't work for that. What? Now you, you, you have a vocation. Yes. I look at the word vocation. I know y'all heard vocational school, haven't y'all? Yes. Vocation means this a calling by the will of God. Employment. Calling. Occupation. So Paul said here, church, he said that you won't work for the what? Vocation. What would y'all call? So truth number one, I got two truths this morning from the word of God about are you walking right? Are you lining up with your calling? What I'm saying, I got two truths for the word of God. So I want you to examine yourself and ask yourself, are you walking right? So we say vocation is employment. We say vocation is where God called you. We see the word vocation mean in uh, uh, occupation. So Paul is looking at us as a Christian life that we are employed by God. Paul said, not only we are employed by God, but being a Christian is not something we do on Sunday. It's a lifestyle. It's an occupation. Based on top of that, we are called by God to do the will of God and walk word according to the will of God. Yes. And Paul said, are you employed by God today? Mm -hmm. So if you say that, guess who your boss is? Truth number one is this. God is your boss. Amen. Uh oh Amen. Let me tie my shoes because I'm about to get it. I say God is your boss. Amen. Can we say the word vocation means employment? Right. It means occupation. It means something you do, amen. Amen. And everything you do, you have a boss, even though you're the boss. Yeah. yeah. Now you you're gonna work for somebody. You're gonna have you gonna have to go by some guidelines, some codes, and sort of state your boss. I don't have a person over me per se as far as telling me how to, when to come to church, but I got God over me. He tell me when to come. He tell me how long to pray. So I have a boss, and you got a boss too. If you saved today by grace, God is your boss. Amen. amen. Yeah. I got push on your good employer. Can God call on you when nobody's ain't there? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, God, God, your boss. That's true, number one. He's your boss. God is. Can God call on you and depend on you to be at work when nobody else comes? Mm -hmm. When it's time when you work for God, God said, I know she's going to be here. You know, when you work a job, it's some important, but when you have them, you got people you work for. It's hard to find some faithful people. Yeah. It's hard to find some people that just count on. We got the week. Mind the month, time you think you can count on them before you know it, you don't steal them no more. You like, boy, we got a good worker. I've been there. Man, you got a good worker, man. This person working hard. All of a sudden, they come up missing. Amen. It's like they never work for you. And it's hard to feel. Every job, every man I ever talked to, anybody I ever talked to that own a business, they said, Pastors, it's hard to find somebody to be faithful to work. It's hard to find somebody you can count on. Amen. Yeah. And so, why? Because people don't want to. They want the check, but they don't want more word to them to get the check. Yeah. So some of y'all are some good employers at work. Some of y'all 
y'all are. Some of y'all, man, y'all, y'all, work, y'all work hard. That's not the question. But you don't have that same energy with God now. Open the door to work. All right. You don't work an extra day at work. Mm-hmm. But you want to give God an extra day. All okay. right. Amen. You don't work that overtime at work. Amen. Just say, check and get bigger. You know about to be Christian time. Oh, yeah. Amen. Hey, now I'm about to get the priest in here. You don't work no extra hour. You don't work that extra day. You don't go in no time. You don't go in. Hey, fuck. But when it comes down to the work of God, when it comes down to the work of God, you become lazy. Amen. Yeah, that's it. Amen. Amen. Uh oh. So some people, well, praise the Lord. You ain't going to miss no work. You ain't going to miss no work. Uh. But when it comes down to the house of God, yeah. when it comes down to being faithful to the things of God, you ain't faithful. That's Amen. It. Praise God. You give yourself an excuse. Well, I ain't feeling too good today. Amen. Use that. If some Christians do what they did to God to their boss, most Christians won't have a job. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. It. Hey, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah.
I said, I can't work. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't be on Wednesday. I got to be off. Boy, I got to be on about 5 o'clock. Paul, he said, Pastor, have you told the owner that? Yes. You need a job? You told the general manager that? Yes. I said, I work. I go to church on Sunday, Wednesdays. And so I, I got to be off about 5 or I got to be off before 7 so I get to church. I got to go home and get my family to go to church. They said, no, don't worry about it, Dad. We give you Wednesday off. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! They ain't just giving you a I didn't work on Wednesday. Why? And I stood up for God and let them know that Wednesday, I go to church, I hear preaching, I serve God, and I'm not going to miss work. I'm not going to miss church for work. Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm all right. Got another job? Yes, sir. Yeah, I can't work there. I'm just like, I'm just like, I got work by. By at least five, because I live. They said, okay, no problem, sir. I said, I go to church. I need to go by five. I was a regular member like that. I was sitting in the pews. Yes. I didn't preach. I went on deacon. Yes, I was sitting in the chair. like that. I'll come to church. But I had some conviction. Because I read that verse that wrote worthy according to the vocation where you all were. Uh, uh, no. So I'm called by God. Yes. God is a God over me before any boss on earth is in. Yes. I'm not right with God that I submit myself to a man to work for them, but I submit my, my, myself to God who's saved. Amen. 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 What I'm saying, church, my wife can tell you, I always had a job. Matter of fact, the boss loved me. The owner was loving me. They bought, she bought my daughter's clothes, bought my daughter's pamphlet, she's a general manager. Why? Because God said, when you do that to please the God, he'll give you favor in his life in the sight of man. My car went out. We ain't got my car. I went to my boss. I said, hey, boss, I'm about to go try to get a car. Can we use one of the dealer car? You'll forget this, but at that, that, that dealer should have had stopped. They, they call it, we call it, uh, they gave sales for cars. But it stopped them. Because I asked them a couple months ago, they said, oh, they said, child, we don't do that no more. We don't get cars for sales no more. The people that got them, got them, they've been here for a long time. And we had it in place before you came. But this time I went to I said, I ain't got no car, can I use a car? But once I know it, I'll drive a different car all the time. But just two months before that, they said, no, I don't do that for sales people. And all the sales people come and say, Charles, how do you get a car? I thought they don't do it no more. What I'm saying, when you make decisions for God, when you won't burn according to your calling, you won't burn according to your vocational, hey, people around you, hey, they look at you and say, you got some standards, you got some conviction, you got to cheat on God. Yep. Yes, indeed. Now that you know God, well, that's how I'm going to How you made it before you got that job? Right. Who are you trusting, first of all, that job with God? Amen. So that's what we got. That. Now, this way about the line right now. Who you trust me? Yeah. Who you trust me? Are you trusting God to provide mm -hmm. or that job to provide? Amen. She said, well, I'm trusting my job. Well, what God can do, or forget he can, you know, that, you know, that car you drive, God can make that thing fold up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You have broken legs and broken arms. Amen. He won't be at work for months at a time. Who, 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 who you working for? Yeah. No, I, I tell you, don't put, don't, don't have an idol. Cause God take away the idol. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 And then what Paul tells the church in baby Ephesus, he said you gotta walk worthy according to that vocation. When you are called, he said walk right. Cause I'm begging, he's I'm begging you to walk right. Amen. He's not beseeching. That man begged the church of Ephesus. Yeah. He begged them, brother, love, to walk right. Line up with God's word. He said, yes. do it. Because yes. you are God is your what? Boss. Mm -hmm. Hold on now. Let's go to these deep today. He's reading chapter 4, verse 1. Look at the Bible. I therefore the prison of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the case where you are what? With all loneliness and meekness, with long suffering, and forbearing one of them what? Amen. I got a question for you, church. Are y'all walking right, Christian? Are you as faithful to your calling to God and to your calling to your discernment work? Who are you more faithful to? Huh? When it comes down to God, we make all kinds of decisions. Why we can't do this? Why we can't do that? And Paul said, hey, church, I'm trying to take home. I'm begging you. He said, I'm pleading with you. Don't, don't, won't worry. Because God had told you. You had made me call you. Your pastor had me call you. I ain't told none of y'all. I ain't told y'all. God did. Yeah. So God Amen. You know who you've been called by? Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Why not right now? Some of y'all, I'm going to use somebody that most of y'all, everybody will say yes, they like to call me. Once uh, my mama called you this morning at the church. <laughs> so I'm just calling you. I want you to. I'm calling you. I'm about to be at the White House. But I'm still going to need somebody to work for me. Huh? I need you to move to Washington, D.C. I'm going to pay for your car. I'm going to pay for your house. And I'm going to pay you a good salary with benefits. He said, I, I, I know you. He said, I know you. We know all about you. I had 2,000 people out there, but I chose you to do this job. Some of y'all will be sold. Boy, you, 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 you'll you go on Facebook, you'll go by. <laughs> huh? You'll call everybody? That's yeah, right. Amen. You'll tell everybody, somebody to move to Washington, D.C., President Obama, out of all the people in America, he called me. He said he interviewed 2,000 people. I ain't going to interview him. He called me. I'm going to hide my number. He got me to work for him. I'm going to get good money. He's going to have good benefits. He's going to pay the bills. I'm still going to get a good check. And he'll buy me a car. Some of y'all will be so wild. Some of y'all will be so excited. But I'm going to tell you, you got somebody in Jehovah God. He's calling. He's better than my mama. You got to go. That's right. Amen. Yes, God. You got a God of heaven that called you personally. Yes. He called you saying, I want you to serve me. Right. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm about all the people in Greenville. God called you to yeah. serve yeah. right. Amen. Amen. Well, I won't get excited about that call. That's right. right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Bro, love, I get this all, all the time. You guys love they said, Pastor, how are you so excited all the time? <laughs> so I'm excited about who called me. And that, Amen. God, I'm, a, I'm a God called pastor. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I'm excited about it. Yes. I got tons of cousins. I got tons of cousins, uncles. I got niece and nephews. I got first cousin, second cousin, my cousin, bad side, my mama side. I got cousins. I don't know. But all the people, God told me to be a pastor. Yeah. All right. All right. Amen. Amen. As far as our recollection, Amen. No, I, never, I never said this in church. As far as our genes go, as far as we go back, nobody in my family will ever started a church. I'm the first one. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God, all my cousins before me. All my family before me. You had picked me. You chose me. You called me. So I can't help but my word I'm going to the vocation that I'm called. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Yes. I, I, I love this calling. I said last week, I said, if I had 10,000 lives to live, I'd be a pastor here working. Right. Wouldn't change my vocation. Some of y'all never be pastors. Matter of fact, most of y'all never be a pastor. Mm -hmm. Most of y'all probably never be a pastor. Why? But God got a call on for you. Yeah. He said, Pastor, what do you mean? God has probably called some of y'all to work in a secular world. We call that the work in the world out there. I work in here and I go out there and tell you about Jesus. Mm -hmm. But some of y'all are called to work around a lot of worldly people mm -hmm. that don't know God. Right. Don't know Jesus. You call by God to work in the environment. That's your call. Amen. Yeah. That's your call. Right. I'm calling to be a pastor. But your call is to serve out there in, out there in your world. Right. What God has given you, the people that God allowed you to put in your place, the people that God allowed you to meet, some people you know that I never know. There's some people you meet that I never meet unless you bring them to church. Right. What I'm saying, you got a calling. God got a call in your life. Yeah. And your calling is important just like mine is important. Amen. My calling is no more important than yours. And you're calling no poor man. We all call my God to do the work of God. Amen. Amen. Some of y'all think I'm better than I'm a pastor. You might not say it, but you think you have a high expectation of me. Well, he's a pastor, so he's supposed to be a certain way. No, we all Christians. Amen. It's just, we brother and sister in Christ. Yes. And I'm just, I'm just y'all. Younger brother, big brother, pastor now, that's all. But I'm no better than y'all. My position no better. My position is more sacred. Yes. Because I'm a pastor, but with no, it's no, I'm in no big guys. I'm not a big man on campus here. Right. I don't run anything here. God is the boss. Amen. Amen. And so all work together. So my job in the church is to be a pastor. But you got to call in the church too. 
Yeah. So I can be the pastor, but one, we ain't doing your car, and the church will operate right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I can do my job right, but everybody doing their job right, the church is not going to operate right. Okay. So don't think that my job is more important than yours. All oh, our job is important to God. Amen. 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 I know a gentleman right now in Maryville, Indiana, about 20 minutes from Gary. I just work for him. He can put on Facebook all the time. They look for some uh, people to change old. They look for some people to detail the cars. Hold on now. I thought I built your car by selling cars. Why do you need somebody to me the gentleman out on Facebook they need somebody to clean the car? Because if I sell them, who gonna clean them? That's right. Huh? Right. Then when you sell them, the, the people that bought their car are gonna come back to that same dealership and get the oil check. Yeah. Right. So everybody, even though I was a salesperson, that person might be a finance man, he's the general man, he got a boss, or the head man, he got somebody down to detail in the cars. Everybody's job is important to make the dealership work properly. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Some people have more responsibility. They right. have people upstairs. They wrote the paycheck. They make sure we got paid. They make sure all the paperwork was correct. They make sure that everything. But we all work together. Amen. We all had a different position. So who had the best position? Nobody had the best position, but one, some people had higher more responsibilities. Yeah. But we all were trying to work for the dealership. Amen. What I'm saying, I may have more responsibility than you, but we all been called by God. And God told us to walk worthy according to the call. Yeah. Amen. 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 So we live in a society where people look at the pastor, wow, he's a pastor of church. And you do the talk to the pastor. That's true. I'm not the boss. Right. Amen. I'm, I'm just part of the body. Amen. Yeah. That's all. I'm part of my my nose is part of my body, my arm. But we all work together. We think you're here today. So Paul said, how does she walk? Not that we just walk word of God's not boss. He's telling her how does she work. Verse number two. With all what? Low you know what it means? It means humility. Mm -hmm. To be humble. Yeah. So, so when you walk, walk what? Humble. humble. Yep. I'm telling you, I'm telling you some church. I'm almost done. And now I'm not even making that picture. Please walk humble. I'm telling you, please walk humble. Time you start getting that big head. Yeah. Yeah, right. Time you feel like you're the big man on campus, the big woman on campus. You feel like you make it somewhere in life. You think you got it going on. You think everything, well, I'm, right, I'm, I'm doing good in life. Before you know it, I'll tell you, Paul said, I beseech you just walk worthy. But he said, I'm telling you how to walk. He said, when you walk, walk humbly. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So he just tell you to walk worthy. He told you how to walk. How I should walk. I should be humble. Oh, yes. Amen. I got to put When you walk, when you walk humbly, you walk your head up high. Not like they say you walk almost head all down and look sad. But some people walk like they all that. You know, yeah. you know what I'm about? They walk with pride. Just they hold them. When they walk in the room, they walk like they all everything around me, y'all. I'm in the room now. Everybody gonna look at me now. But God said, when you walk, walk with Hagomis. That's the okay. unity. Then he said, walk with what? Meekness. You know what meekness means? It means power under control. Yes. The Bible said Moses was the most meek man on earth. That means Moses was a man that was had some power, but he. Use it under control. Yes. He said, so some people got some control, brother, but they don't use it. Yes. They use their power to eliminate people. Amen. They use their power to get over Amen. people. Right. They use their power to con people. But God said, hey, when you walk, walk humility like you're humble. Be humility. Be, be humble. Be low to mind. He said, walk also. He said, also, I want you to walk with meekness. Yes. Yeah. They look what he said, what you walk with. So I want you to walk with long what? Suffering. You know what long suffering is? I'm going to tell you what long suffering is. It, it not, it's too, it's too worried. Long suffering patient, it, they, 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 they brothers and sisters, all what you say. Yeah. But they mean different. Okay. Patient teaches me to wait on God. Amen. He said, I will wait on God. Yeah. Patient means I'm waiting on God. Y'all with me? Amen. Amen. Long suffering is not me waiting on God, but long suffering means me being patient with my fellow man. Amen. Amen. Oh, Amen. Oh, oh. So, Jalen, man, I don't like some stuff Jalen did. Boy, I show all my children away, man. Why you do that like that? But my job would be long suffering towards him. Amen. Amen. See, he said be patient. He said, he said, well, with patient, got patient when I went out with God, but long suffering with my fellow man. Yes. Amen. You know how some y'all say, man, I'm tired of I'm, I'm done with them. I'm just I'm fed up with my ain't putting with them anymore. I'm done with them. I gave them, I gave them a lot of change in the bed, but I'm done. Boy, well, that's not long suffering. Amen. Uh oh. Amen. You, we always say, thank God for being patient toward me. You need to start being long suffering towards your fellow man, man. Amen. Amen. We thank God. I thank God he didn't pace with me, boy. Amen. I'm God. You want to pace with me? I don't know where I'll be. Yeah. Well, but what's the matter me if you be long suffering toward them? He says, so when you walk, he I want you to walk with long suffering with your fellow man. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Your fellow man going to tell you something that you don't want to hear. Yeah. Your fellow man going to act like you don't want him to act. 
Yeah. They don't talk crazy to you and stuff. That's right. How if you talk crazy to God? You said, Pastor, I don't talk crazy to God. When God tells you to do something, you turn your back on you turn, you, you talk crazy to God. Amen. How many times you've you been living in sin? And God knew, and God knew you were saying nobody that was. He could have killed you right then. Right. Yeah. But he'll pay you to it. Amen. So why would we take the transfer that to our fellow man? Yes, no. And be long suffering towards him. Well, I, man, Pastor, you understand? No. Now you understand how to do God. Well, Pastor, you understand in ways. Well, if, if you knew how God looked at your ways, for you, you would realize who you really are. How about compared to God when you built the rag? And you said, God, I ain't as bad as him. And you show me as good as God. Amen. I'm going to tell you the nation when you walk. Walk with long suffering. Amen. Yeah. Then look what he said, brother. He said, long what? Suffering. Look, so not like that word long, man. How long? He didn't say how long. He said, but long. Yeah. Amen. Then he said, what? Suffering. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't, you don't, as long as you walk long, you're going to suffer while you're walking. <laughs> Towards your fellow man. How many of y'all suffer because of man? Amen. Not just a man, but mankind. They brought some suffering. <clears throat> They've been a long journey. Yes. Amen. And done a lot of suffering. But God said, I want you to be long and suffer towards it. Yes. Amen. For all the good. Amen. Then he said, for bearing love. We talked about that the other day, is that God wants to love people. Yeah. Listen to church. I think this. I, I, I have another truth today. And I don't think God wants me to go with that today. But the question is, are you walking worthy? Are you walking worthy? Are you a humble person? I'm telling you, man, are you humble? You said, Pat, with that pride, just say I'm humble. No, you know you're humble or not. Because the Bible tells examine myself. Are you a humble person? Uh, when you start dealing with something, you start changing. Mm -hmm. I have been around people that start dealing with something, you can tell you know, they start acting different than you're with something. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I think they start acting a little different when they got something. They, they feel like you know, somebody can ask for something they want. Yeah. <laughs> but when they're broke, they want to hang right here. They want to, they want to, they talk nice, but they talk to you. When well, time they give us something, they stand off. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wow, that's crazy. So that's not how That means that why not? I, I, I think I'm getting somewhere. So I'm, I ain't gonna hang with. I ain't gonna talk to people. I used to talk to them. Cause they ain't on my level. No more. I'm trying to be bigger than them, better than They still stuck in the same rut. Well, maybe you go tell them how to get out the rut. You tell them how you did it so they can come with you. That's Amen. Right. Talk to them. Now you see that I'm trying to come with you. Then you just bag up, but we still go reach them. Right. You keep reaching. You keep reaching. But people say, well, man, I ain't gonna talk to them. Cause they might. Boy, they, you see somebody now tonight, so they might be calling out for something. But you not think for all time. You thought you'd ask them for something. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you thought they'll call you to get you something. Now you got something, you're scared out of phone because you think they're going to ask you for something. That's pride. Amen. Yeah, that's it. Well, ain't nothing hard about that, y'all. You know, listen to me. These, I want you to, I want you to be long suffering. I want you to have some meekness. He said, you get something, y'all get some power. Then don't change, you get some power. Right. Don't stop treating people bad because y'all look power. Don't think that, you, that you, right. you're a big shot because you're telling people what to do. Yeah. Hey, hey, listen to me. I'm really, if you can, hey, either, I feed them and get some bees, some honey, and give them some vinegar. Yeah. What I'm saying is this. Hey, listen, the more humble you are, the more meek you are, the more path that people will to follow you. Amen. Yeah. I talked to my cousin Liz like that. We don't care what she did. But she got a, 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 a bump bump in that bean thing, right? She had been on battle for me. She said, Ben never came across in a never, never came across in a bad way, but got being so nice. To her, but God being so kind to her, God being don't use his power to, to dominate her, and being tell her to do something she do. Then what a good boss do? A good, right. a good boss be good to his employers, saying do what he want, what they need, whatever he tell them to do it. Yeah. Then one will build brackets for you. So some people get persistent, they start being mean. Huh? Hey, take a look. Oh, hey, you don't want to take a look at yourself. Go ahead and take a look at yourself. Don't do what I say, I'm going to fire your butt, huh? I'm going to fire your boy now. I said, Jenny, hey, man. You know, you go do that for me, man. What you doing, Jimmy? You got it going on right now? You go do that for me, man. Appreciate that, Jeff. Man, I'm going to take out the one day, okay, Jimmy? I'm his boss. I'm taking out the He said, well, I got a nice boss, man. He's taking out the He's going to yell at me. I said, hey, Jeff, man, I'm going to be out there. I'm going to go to church tonight, but you're going to get out there for a Saturday. I'm going to win you all day. But, Jeff, I really need you to come in, Jeff, man. I'm short sure staff. I'll get you out there for church. And then, Jeff, I'm going to not make it up to you. Baby, you come in for me, Jeff. But if I mean to him, he said, I ain't coming in for you then. Huh? What I'm saying is this. Tell my God, I was in wrong word in course of your what? Call out. Everybody in this church one day, if you serve God, God will have you over somebody. Yes. You're going to be over somebody when you tell them what you're doing. So Paul is teaching us how to walk worthy. How to get other people to line up with God's word. Get other people to walk what? Right. right. Are you walking right today? Do you put your job for God? What you put before God there? Are you putting God first? 
When you make decisions, you say, what would God, what would God want to do? Before you take a job, you say, okay, now see that job in the field with me and him. Right. That's what I do. When I work, I say, if that job would interfere with me and him, me and him, well, I, I taught my church, I, I teach them all the time. If that job interfered with you and him, that job ain't from him, it's from him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. If that job interfered with you and him, that job ain't from him, it's from him. Him. He would never give you anything that would get your attention off him. Amen. Amen. He'll never do that. That's right. Amen. So if you get something that interferes with you and him, it ain't from him, it's from him. Right. You and him, that man on earth. Mm -hmm. So I got close. I walk away. Right. Are you known as a Christian, Ryan? I said, Paul, are you known as a Christian? Do people know you as a good Christian? Mm -hmm. That you're a different type of Christian. You need a Christian like everybody else. Are you walking worthy today? Are you known as being a Christian person at your job? If I come to your job tomorrow, I won't know where to tell me you got a good testimony. Hey, man! Amen. Amen. I see why a lot of people, rich people that work, and most Christians don't have they go to work and y'all laugh at their garbage, you laugh at their cursing, you laugh at their fornication, you laugh at their adultery, you laugh at their curse work, you laugh at their dirty movies, you laugh at everything. They try to talk to my God, they start laughing at you because they see you fake. Amen. 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 You get that round, you get that, you get the gospel and say, ooh, girl, you heard about him? You heard about this? Like, ooh, for real, girl? I can't believe they did that. Really? Right. So you say, I don't want to hear about what they doing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. I don't hear them pray for them, but they ain't my big what they doing. Yeah. Come on. Most people work. That's why most Christians ain't going to say co-workers, because we ain't different. Amen. What you know about police going to be a police? Am I right? Yeah. Huh? A firefighter going to be a firefighter. Amen. Amen. As a chef, we're going to ask a chef, what you known for? Yes. What are you known for? What are you known for? He said, well, word according to your what? Oh. What are you known for? She said, are you pastor him? Pastor Charles, she said. Well, I ain't going to have a pastor. What you know? I go, I'm going to say pastor. Both of them. I go to the gym. Get ready to call the gym. Pastor. Everybody. The fellow the drugs, they kill us. Now I know they kill us. I remember I got a guy, man, listen. I'd rather play ball at hey, Pizza. You go over here, Pastor, go over there and play ball with them guys. Yes, I do. But I always call me Pastor. Right. Every, man, listen, I leave a van open. I left, man, there's nobody around for me. Nobody that try to rob me. I'm in the hood at nighttime. And the trauma and them come in the hood. I know them guys over there. Them guys rough me because I see a lot of them in jail for crazy stuff. What I'm saying, they call me Pastor. Amen. Because I have like a pastor in the court. I have like a pastor when I'm sitting down. I like a pastor at church. I like a pastor at home. I'm a pastor. What you know? Do you act the same way and work in church like you do at church? What I'm saying is, you act like a Christian at church, right? You say, yes, I do, but do you act like a Christian at home and work? Amen. And now, how do you speak? You don't have to put it out right here in the next 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. So you need to come to church at 11 o'clock and 11 30. I'm not a Christian. Amen. Yes. Right. <laughs> I don't have that's all. But do you act like a Christian when you go to work tomorrow? Amen. When you go to school tomorrow? When you go hang around your, your worthy family that don't know God, well, how do you act when your family come around? Amen. Oh, oh, oh. Amen. I, I think I think I touched something there. Amen. How do you act when your family come Amen. around? Amen. Yeah. Do you fit in with the crew? Mm. <laughs> Amen. 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 Your family get the curse, you get the curse, and your family get the smoke, you get the smoking. Yeah. Your family get the drinking, you get the drinking. Your family get the line, you get the line. Catch yeah. around your family. The Bible says you should walk worthy according to the calling. I'm going to tell you, I'm not mama call. I'm not daddy call. I'm not sister call. I'm called by God. I don't care about mama around. I don't care about dad around. I don't care about wife around. I'm still called by God. Amen. 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 I don't know how I act when I come around her. Ask her. I have my family when I come around. I still I like Christian. That's right. Amen. I don't drink this curse with life. Amen. None of my family ever say hurry curse. Right. Mm -hmm. They can have all the beer they want, they can have beer from here right. to the to, to, to Amen. I don't take a sip of it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I go to the family and tell them you smoke them big old blunts. <laughs> my family ever kind of face, hey, they, they, I'm talking about family telling me. They said, cuz, hey man, no, you you doing some right with That's okay. That's so right. I I I I I go around and just talk to them. See what they're doing. They say, hey, club, we're doing something, man. We right. appreciate it. And I said, hey, I, I respect that. Amen. So my family respect me. That's right. Amen. And I'm sorry I have to live on this blind. That's right. Because I walk worthy mm -hmm. at, at my calling. Amen. My woman, you know, my family for me, but I'm still going to act like a what? Preacher. 
Christian. And that's what I am. That's right. I'm not part time. I'm full time. Amen. Who in here like I don't like part time hours. I'm a full time. I make a little more money. Amen. Amen. So I want to be a part time Christian. Because right. if I get part time, I make some part time what benefits from God. But if I'm a full time Christian, I'm getting full time what. Mm -hmm. I'm just hey, y'all want to stand up? And I'm like, don't. And we work a job, don't love Tim for wrong, my love. Most companies, now Tim for wrong, I tell you. When you full time home job, you get different benefits inside of that seasonal or something, right? Amen. I thought so. So some Christians call it seasonal. They, they, listen, during a summer, they're going to backslide. During a holiday, they're going to backslide. During a family, it, uh, 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 it gathered, they're going to backslide. But they almost serve God on a certain part of the year. Like wintertime, they can't go. You know, wintertime, they can't get out and do it as much. So some people that they season them, they work on for wintertime. And when wintertime's over, they 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 they, they done up being a Christian, brother. Mm -hmm. And when summertime comes, they really get out there bad during the summer. They get out there bad during the summertime. They, 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 you know, you, you're gonna tell you when you're not a good Christian, you're gonna see how they act during the summer. Yeah. I found a lot of things about Christians during the summertime. They they still slow down during the winter. Time. They gonna slow down. They will be like a better holiday. <laughs> but when that summer and spring time comes, all the energy they, they, they held back on the winter, they come out, they don't let anything go, they really get wild. Huh? You know it's summertime, people just naked more than you ever. Because they've been trying to wear big long coats and jackets during the winter time and they've been cold. <laughs> so when spring time comes, they start, they wear less clothes because they want to feel free. And they've been cold, they holding back, so they've been covering up because they've been cold. <laughs> but when spring or summer, they, 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 they show, you know that people don't dress half naked in the wintertime unless they're some crazy white people. <laughs> I got white friends. I mean, I see white people the other day. It's cold. She got short sides. It's cold out there. Cold. Cold, man. And I'm like, no, y'all. I'm like, this. I'm like, ma'am, don't be wearing less clothes in the summertime. And don't they wear more clothes in the winter, cold than winter including Christians. Because I told them they, they season on Christians. Yeah. What's you are? Are you a seasonal Christian? Every, every year you get hired by God. They're like, God, it's like God only hired you during the winter time. Huh? You huh? have me for God. I thank God wants you to be full time. Amen. You think God wants me? What about this morning y'all came to church and I have not one here? What would y'all think? Y'all come back tonight. What about you need here? And I tell y'all, hey, I don't work on second Sundays now. I don't work on first. <laughs> we said, Pat, we have church every Sunday. Well, I don't do what I want to. Now, how would y'all think of me? Let's pray out here, y'all. Let's pray out here. I'm asking a few questions. I got a question. Let's be honest about this thing. Are you a part-time Christian or full-time Christian? If you're a full-time Christian, raise your hand. Raise your hand. You, you said you're full-time. You're full-time. You're full-time. Who in here is a pastor? I'm a part-time Christian. I'm a pastor. I'm a part-time. According to the, my situation, circumstance, I'm, I'm a, I, I like that. I like that people raise their hand. Like, oh, amen. I like that. I got another question. Who here is a pastor? I don't know if I'm a Christian or not. I've been baptized. But, Pastor, if I die right now, I'm not 100% sure I go to heaven, Pastor. I don't know if I'm going to heaven. I hope I'm going. I'm working my way, Pastor. I've been baptized. I've been a member of church. But, Pastor, if I die, I'm not 100%. I don't know for sure, Pastor. I hope I go. Raise your hand. Pastor, pray for me. I don't know for sure if I die tonight. This morning, I go to heaven, Pastor. If I have a car accident, I'm not for sure I go to be with the Lord. I hope I go, Pastor. I'm doing all I can to get there. But I don't know if I'm going to get there. But I hope I go. Pray for me, Pastor. Raise your hand. Don't be ashamed. You're in church. We're in church. Raise your hand. Pastor, pray for me. If I die right now, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to have to pray for me. Anybody, raise your hand, y'all. Don't be nervous. We're in church. You're in the house of God. You can be honest. Anybody like that? Not, you're not saved? Who in here says, Pastor, I'm saved? And I can show you from the Bible how I got saved. Pastor, I know I'm saved. And I can show you from a verse from the Bible to back up that I know I'm saved. Anybody like this? Say, Pastor, I'm saved. I got a verse from the Bible to back up. Wow. Amen. Amen. So basically, today, Challenge that all Christians seem like. And the challenge this, we got some song raise their hand for part time and song raise their hand for full time. I'm gonna tell you what a full time Christian do. I'm like, can I be real with you? Y'all look at me, I'm gonna be praying, I'm gonna have all I'm just I'm gonna tell you what, I'm telling you, song raise their hand for full time, part time. I'm a pastor, right? Do I have the right by God to tell you what a full time Christian or part time Christian Amen. is? Amen. And we're gonna take too many. Full time Christian won't come to church on Sunday morning on. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Full time Christian. Go soul with him. Yes. They don't go out and knock on doors. God told us to go up to the highways and hedges and compel a man to how many what? Yeah. That's the Bible. Because that's full time. Yeah. Full time Christian, wherever they be, wherever around that they surround their life around the church, they don't surround that church around their lives. Yeah. What I mean by that, some people say, well, I'm able to come, I come to church. But full time Christian said, no, I'm going to get to church. 
Do you see the difference? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hard time for said, I might be making for a revival. Full time for said, Pastor, I'm coming to revival. Amen. Yes. I'm trying to help you now. I'm being honest with you. I was a full time Christian before I became a pastor. Full time Christian said, Whatever God wants me to do, I'm going to do. Yes. Amen. And what we got, the devil wants me to do, I'm going to turn him down. Right. I'm going to put God for God, not just ahead of my life, but God is a what? Sinner. Amen. Father God. I don't, I don't do full time and part time. You know. I can get my, 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 my view on it, but God, my view can be wrong. Because yes. I'm a man. And so, Lord, I can please have me do. And my, my, my job is not to examine them, it's their job to examine themselves. Yes. So, I want them to examine themselves and see how they treat the full time. Are they part time? Father, I pray, God, that they'll come to the old fashioned invitation today and and Lord makes a decision. I, I walk in word according to their call, the vocation where they call. Bless the invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you walking according to how God was you walk? Let's be real. You know you ain't walking. You know, you know, you know yourself better than I do. You know the real you. And come to the altar today and say, God, I'm here to God part time. And I'm not the Christian of the day. God, I'm not faithful to be not I ain't no soul word, Lord. You know, God don't sleep over the door knocking out. He said, Pastor, I don't think I got to be a door. Go door knock and be a full time Christian. Well, Jesus did it. The disciples did it. The people in the Bible did it. And how to how be a better Christian? They were, and they did not know. We live in what's called a counterfeit world. Why do you got that counterfeit? You got counterfeit Christianity. He said, Pastor, what do you mean about it? And some people think they're right with God. Amen. That's a free will, amen. Amen. And you don't come back tonight, we'll hope you see you again. 
Amen. Like, well, if you don't come back with nothing, then you came this morning. Amen. Like, you, you didn't have to come here. You could have went to any church, but you didn't have to come here, but you came here. So I'm thinking about that. If you come back with nothing, I, I, I guarantee you'll be blessed by the, the service. It's not going to be a, a different service than I know the service. you like it. I guarantee you. So you come back. You don't come back tonight. I hope you come back to the revival. Amen. You start tomorrow night. You might not think you can't come Monday. Now I'm going to say this, brother. You want to cut it off? I'm going to take out the answer. 